right, folks, John Maddening here for WFTD.TV. Switchblade Susie, Bell of the Brawl, hosts, yes. part of the hosts league. The fantastic Atlanta Roller Girls. So whose fault is this? Who decided, okay, we are we're gonna do this. We are gonna try to try to host championships. Everyone. Everyone? Yes. <laughs> Blame everyone. It everyone. all goes around. The whole league wanted to do it. The whole league. It was yeah. a team effort. We okay. all wanted to be here. That's good. Uh, now, normally, you guys play in the Shrine Center, which is only a thousand seats. Now we know that would never do for this. We have at least two thousand people here already. Yeah. Yikes. Uh, so, how did you get in touch with these folks here, the Georgia World Congress Center, and how has it been working with them? Well, we've actually done some events here before. They they do a lot of large scale events here, and they've asked us to come and maybe do an expo bout or something like that. So when um, WIFTA first you know, took our bid, we started looking around for different places, and there were a couple options, but this one was the best as far as locally centered and also I mean it's huge and we yeah. had a good relationship <laughs> with them so it just worked out. Great. So we were, we got into town yesterday and we we're walking around and uh, I'm with Minnesota. We're all wearing our jackets and people, everyone on the street knew that this was happening. <laughs> I mean, they're, they, the manager of the drugstore, the uh, the waiter at the at the pizza place, everybody knew this was happening. How did you do such a good job about getting the local word out? Do you know? Um, we have some great marketing people. Yeah, we have great marketing people. I mean, they've just been working their butts off to get it. Mar I mean, we even have like a little snippet playing on the MARTA train. So it's just yeah, everywhere. Yeah, we saw those. It's yeah, fantastic. Every it's been everywhere. All the newspapers, like little MARTA snippets, flyers. Uh, a lot of it's on like Facebook. You know, that's a big, awesome tool to use. Yeah. To spread the word. So now when you put in to host a tournament, there's no assurance that you're actually going to get to play in it. Now you guys were really kind of the Cinderella story of the South Centrals. I mean, coming up to the last game, that last jam against Texas, and it was it was one of the bo the most fantastic bouts of this entire tournament season. Right. How does that? How did that feel? Getting into it, getting done, getting through, knowing you're going to be playing in front of your hometown crowd, a lot of people from Atlanta here. Yeah. Well, I mean, we've been doing this a long time. Susie and I have been playing. I mean, I've been playing since 2005. Susie's been playing since. 2006, 2007. So it's just been a long time coming. So it was, it was the best, one of the best, if not the best moment of my life, making it here. It's amazing. I think another thing was when we started this season, and when we knew that we were going to be hosting this tournament, we had to make a decision. Are we going to go and work? Are we going to be volunteers? Yep. Or are we going to go skate? And no. we said, we're going to go skate. Excellent. Well, best of luck to you. You got a tough out against Naptown coming up. Good luck for the whole weekend. You've been put on a great tournament. We're going to toss it back to you for the play-by-play -play with Mr. Bam Bam and Mr. Kool-Aid. You're watching WFTDA.TV. All right, Derby World. This is John Kool-Aid Porter coming to you live from Atlanta, Georgia. I'm joined here by the ever-lovely. My name is Bam Bam. I do my best. I'll try and keep up for America's sake and the rest of the world as they are joining us here on day one of WFTDA Championship Tournament. We've seen some great plays so far. We have just actually arrived at this point. We have had some introductions here in-house for Naptown and Atlanta. And looks like we're going to get right to the action. We'll get rosters when we get a break. Again, this is the number three from the north, Naptown Roller Girls, going up against the number two from the south, Atlanta Roller Girls. Looks like coming to the jammer line for Atlanta, the Women in the red with blue and white accent. Number one pound, Merchant of Menace. I believe that is number 76. Made in America in white for Naptown, who's taking the line to the inside. Gets shoved around, just kind of looking for any window, and none is open. Though Atlanta up in the middle, trying to make some movement, Kool-Aid. That's right, both teams again 4-4 four and four as we've started off this game. No one in the penalty box just yet. Coming up front now, Merchant of Menace. Merchant of Menace, one Naptown blocker to get past. She does. Merchant of Menace is lead jammer. Made America is still back in the pack. She's recycled towards the back, Bam Bam. That was Serial Killer doing a nice job on nap time, holding up Atlanta, but she is able to get around. Merchant now looking for any way up through the middle. She's caught about mid-pack as Jammer for nap time. Uh, nap town is out. She, of course, is being waved off as Lee Jammer had already been established. Merchant of Menace now looking to complete a scoring pass. Checks, sees where Made in America is. She's coming towards the pack. Merchant of Menace calls it off. That's three points on the board for Atlanta. Again, Atlanta in the red. Naptown in the whites, one jam in the books. It's three to nothing, Bam Bam. Naptown Roller Girls, we've got triple zero is I'm a Hurt You. Number two is Serial Killer. Number 208, Amuse Bouche. 218 is Asian Sensation. 237, 
Scorpio Pathic, 317 is Shady Lane, 321. Katja Lookin, Riptide is number four, number 43. Piper Sonic, 614 G Rocket, 6 feet at Enya Grave. Dora the Destroyer, number seven, who's out there. Made America 76 and Blue Messiah M3. All right, we've got a Moose Boosh for Naptown in the white. Holly Saddle for Atlanta in the red. Both cameras towards the back of the pack. Fairly quick moving pack as the pack comes around, turn four and through for lead jammer, Holly Seidel for Atlanta. We've got a Moose Bush caught at the back of the pack now, has a nice bit of a pace. She doesn't have really any assistance so far as they're just trying to keep up with Atlanta. The three wall along the front in red, breaking up a little bit there, but a Moose Bush not able to make any movement so far as the jammer is back around yeah, for Atlanta. Correct, here comes Holly Seidel now on a scoring pass. A Moose Bush does now just get out of the pack. Alessandro, there's one point. Remember, hips in front of hips to score the points. Making her way towards the front of the pack. Checks Amuz Bush and calls it off. No points for Naptown. One. One for Atlanta. We have got uh, Atlanta Roller Girls for you. 10 13 is Holocidal. 12 a.m. is Rebel Yellow. 1979 is the Ruffian. One pound is the Merchant of Menace. 2 LBU, that is Queen Lucia Tifa. Number 32, Bell of the Brawl. Number 50, Jammunition. 6 is Wild Cherry. Alas Insane is 73. 747, Ozzy Kamikaze. 762, Scout Sniper. 89, 79, Switchblade, Susie. 99, Nora Gretz. And Agent Mauler. X13. That's right. We've got Merchant of Menace back on the jammer line for Atlanta in the white. Hypersonic for Naptown in the red. Excuse me. Hypersonic for Naptown in the whites. Merchant of Menace for Atlanta in the red. I apologize. Naptown Jammer gets bumped out, has to hold until the pack comes around. She can re-enter legally. Now she's got a nice two wall of red Atlanta holding her back. But when she gets past that, there's another set of two waiting for her. Pack gets stretched out. Nice maneuver. Crowd very happy here in Atlanta as their team has lead jam. They do again for the third time. Piper Sonic still working on her initial pass. Comes up towards the front. This Atlanta defense is very stout. Piper Sonic does now get out just as Merchant of Menace approaches the pack on her scoring run, Bam Bam. Pack really solid speed. No one has any great control of the pack so far, but they are really breaking up into those quadrants quite nicely, and it's benefiting Atlanta quite a bit as they pick up another four points on that pass. Naptown still holding at zero, bringing the total Atlanta eight. And coming to the jammer line for Naptown, number 614, that is G-Rocket, not one of their uh, prototypical jammers, Bam Bam. After three jams with no points, no lead jammers, looks like they're trying to switch up the rotation just a little bit. And I think that's something to do for both that kind of morale to break up the expectation from the other team. Atlanta comes out strong. They've got eight. You're like, let's show G-Rocket, see if she can shake things up just a little bit, maybe switch up Atlanta's blocking strategy. But right now, Atlanta taking easy advantage. They're getting through in about a quarter of a track. Lead jam at Atlanta. That's Jammunition jamming for Atlanta in the red. G-Rocket still stuck in the pack. Guys, I believe that is a jammer lap point. Jammunition now working on a natural grand slam. G-Rocket got pushed out. She had to come back in legally. She was able to do that, but she's got the three plus one more to get past for Atlanta. And they are moving slower and slower as Atlanta's jammer comes around, picks up five points on that pass, taking them to 13. G-Rocket again still on her initial passes. Here's Jammunition now on her second scoring run. Naptown's got a solid four wall of defense up front. Able to hold Jammunition as they come out of turn four into the straightaway. Nice maneuvering there from the front. Getting again in front of Atlanta. So at least the momentum is slowing slightly, but not enough to hold back the points for any great duration. Jammunition with a solid, solid forearm there. Able to get past the last line of defense for Naptown. That's another grand slam as Shady Lane goes to the penalty box for Naptown. Shady Lane was trying to do her best, but goes down in front. Nice little bit of a hop. Atlanta gets over. So we have one for White. Naptown in the box. Pack again still moving strongly as we've got 30 seconds left in this jam. G-Rocket still in her initial pass. Jammunition 10 points scored so far in this jam. 18 to nothing Atlanta over Naptown. Jammunition yeah. sees an inside line. She's got it up front with a two wall. Gets, oh, I'm a hurt you with a nice move. Forces Jammunition out of bounds. And that is the jam. Four more points on that last pass. And this is a 22 to nothing score. Atlanta over Naptown. Just under 24 minutes left in the first half. We see a replay here of Jammunition. 
able to shrug off that hit from uh, Shady Lane there, Bam Bam. And again, it was a beautifully timed. I mean, you have to think about it. You've got a lot of force, and your own momentum is going to be a factor. Shady Lane tries to pull up. She just loses that bit of balance. Nice bit of a lean forward from the jammer in red for Atlanta. It looks like we now have an official timeout. So let's tell you about some of our fabulous sponsors, Bam Bam. Rydell Skates, the official skate of the WFTDA. Unmatched quality, unmatched performance. Find them on the web at RydellSkates.com. And we're back to it. We can take a quick second to talk kind of the history of the teams as they came into this tournament. Naptown comes in as a nice solid three. Atlanta comes in number two, 20 point difference. Almost had it over Texas in that last game of the South, but Texas able to pull it out at the last minute. They're trying to see if maybe they will meet up one more time. Atlanta pulling out strong, 22, Naptown zero. All right, no regrets jamming for Atlanta. Made in America for Naptown. Made in America going to the penalty box. Major forearm, major forearm on Made in America. This is now a power jam for Atlanta. Nora Gretz jamming for her first time tonight, though, Bam Bam. I'm a hurt you also going to the penalty box. So the pivot in the box, that is one, two, three. Lined up in white for Naptown. That is only two defenders out there. It looks like that was a minor cut. Minor track cut on Nora Gretz as she made her way through the pack. So that was initial pass down, no lead jammer. We're going to go the full two minutes. Atlanta immediately goes into a passive offense. Out of play, and Nora Gretz is out for how many? Five points. Shady Lane back in the action now for Naptown, getting up to the front, though she has someone who's now going off. So once again, we only have two for Naptown defending. Jammer's coming up, just muscling it. You got to love Atlanta, just like these teams, trusting their jammer to make it work. And another Naptown blocker going to the penalty box. This time a major low block is another grand slam for Nora Gretz. Now 10 points in this jam, makes the score 32 to nothing. Only one Naptown blocker out there. That is Shady Lane, and she's going to make it that much more difficult because we have two scoops coming around just able to sit as we have someone standing in the penalty box. So less than 10 seconds to serve for the pivot. Jammer is also out now for nap time. Basically goes right into a defensive position. Gets a bit of a bump and face plants into the opponent wall for Atlanta. So another grand slam there for Nora Gretz. It looks like Made in America was trying to get a back block call. She actually got a minor low block call on herself on that, uh, on that fall. So Made in America, out of the penalty box. Power jam is over. This is the initial pass for Made in America, jamming for Naptown in the white. Nora Gretz working on yet another scoring pass, Bam Bam. We're only about eight and a half minutes left in. The score is 42 for Atlanta. They still have a few seconds left. We will see if they will get any more. And Atlanta just running away with it, Bam Bam. 46 to nothing. I'm, I'm a little surprised we haven't seen a timeout yet from Naptown. You'd think with the score at this point, a beautiful replay. We see there the uh, Nora Gretz able to cut through. Yeah, Asian sensation trying to hold position serial killer as well. They just could not keep together. Nice power. We've seen that, though, so far this game. Power from these uh, Atlanta Jammers. We saw it in South Central Tournament. We're seeing it continue here today. They definitely had some uh, heat on them. They've kept it going into this game. All right, Merchant of Menace jamming against the Moose Bouche. Both, excuse me, Merchant of Menace is up. She's out. She's lead jammer yet again for Atlanta. Merchant of Menace, the Moose Bouche is in the back of the pack, Bam Bam. Trying to get a bit of a uh, short whip off of Dora, number seven. Does not really get much because she gets knocked down to the inside. She's got to get back up. She's already at the back of the pack as jammer for Atlanta now. Coming in, decides to slow it up because she has the three wall of blockers. And a Moose Bouche does, able to, is able to stay on her skate. She's out of the pack. And Merchant of Menace completes the scoring pass, calls it off. And again, I think that's the, the smart play. She could keep going if she wanted to. Definitely momentum's been in their favor. But you know what? At this point, there's no reason. It's been a couple of points, a couple of points. And it's just that quick gathering has really been in the favor as Atlanta now sits at 50 points, Naptown at zero. And we've only been 10 minutes into this game so far. So we got Piper Sonic coming back to the jammer line for Naptown. Again, Naptown in the white. Holly Seidel coming to the jammer line for the second time tonight for Atlanta in the red. Both jammers quickly move into a scrum start. Holly Seidel looks like she's got an outside line. Piper Sonic working towards the front. This 
could be the best chance so far for Naptown to get lead jammer. She does. Piper Sonic is out for lead jammer, Bam Bam. Excellent. That is the example of perseverance that we're going to show our kids someday because she kept moving forward, kept moving forward, and as that distance went, didn't even need to rely on the outside of the engagement zone, made a move to the inside. Now she's caught up in the middle of the pack, looking to see if she's going to get any assistance, and it looks like not so much as her team has moved forward, trying to hold back the blocking of Holocidal, who is just about through on the inside line. It's one more to get past. And does. So that's all five points. Piper Sonic was able to get her hips in front of the hips of Holly Seidel. Both jammers kind of neck and neck trading position. We'll see what Piper Sonic does with it. Checks the pack position and calls it off. So nice little show out there for Naptown, able to get, get lead jammer for the first time in this game and able to put some points on the board and to do it in style with a grand slam. Indeed, they've got now five points for Naptown, 50 points for Atlanta. As we look at our books here, you can see actually the way that the teams have played over the history of tournaments fairly even. They have not been really able to qualify for some time. Naptown did come in to Continental Divide and conquer. They came in as the third seed. They lost their first game against Philly by 157 points. Atlanta's going to be their first time to the big show here at home. So Merchant and Menace jamming for Atlanta. G-Rocket for Naptown. G-Rocket won't way up front. G-Rocket is out of the pack. G-Rocket is delayed call. I suspect no lead jammer. That is correct. Yep. G-Rocket is not lead. Merchant of Menace is out. She is lead. And Merchant of Menace quickly calls it off. That was a minor forearm, Bam Bam. Indeed it was, and I think that was the wise call. Merchant's in a position where she realizes it's going to be a bit of a race. She's not quite able to catch up that quickly, so she decides to call it reset. You know, they're doing exceedingly strong so far. And if you look, we don't have a lot of penalty play. Naptown had a couple right in a row there, but the box has been fairly empty ever since. We've got about five players with one apiece, only two trips to the box for Atlanta on different players. So not a lot of penalties, but again, we're only 14 minutes into this game, 13. We've got Jamie Nish and Jamie for Atlanta, Made in America for Naptown. And out is Made in America. She is the lead jammer for Naptown. Nice bit of a melee in the pack. Can I not even see the jammer for Atlanta. Able to bust her way through almost, but every time she's about to, another skater in white comes and just gets right in front of her. Jamunition is trying to make a move on that inside and just cannot do it. She gets knocked down between quarter one and two. Made in America up front with Queen Lucia Cuts to the inside. She's out and around. Did she get all five points? She did. That's a grand slam for Made in America. With Jamie is still working on her initial pass, here comes Made in America. Now with an opportunity to continue to chip into this lead, Bam Bam. It looks like, again, focus right now is on the jammer for Atlanta. And right as Jamie Nishin is able to get out now, of course, she got the 20-foot uh, shot outside of the zone of engagement. Gets a little bit of a pass on that one. About to earn it on her own. Jammer right in the middle of the pack now. <laughs> with a nice spin around, <laughs> Made in America, yep, got four points, so. All of a sudden, Naptown took the first, essentially, first seven jams off, did not get lead jammer once, went to the penalty box one time, allowed Nap Atlanta to build up a 50-point lead. Now, in these last three jams, they've scored a total of 14 points, and just like that, it's 50 to 14 with 16 minutes left. Again, looking at our stats overall, we've got a 6 to 5 postseason for Naptown, a 6 to 7 postseason uh, for Atlanta. Bam, bam, we see the replay here, Made in America. You can see just as she was calling it off, swiveled around, got the hips in front of hips. We've got a moose boosh on the jammer line for Naptown. And that is number 99, Nora Gretz for Atlanta. But who's lead, Bam Bam? That is going to be the one, the only, number 28, the moose boosh You're probably going to hear us say her name a lot this weekend. She's been a solid player for Naptown for some time, though we do have jammer out for Atlanta. And Nora Gretz, 20 feet. She's allowed to spring from the pack. Atlanta's got all four of their blockers up front moving fairly quickly. They have to slow down to avoid a destruction of the pack penalty. <laughs> Moose Boosh <laughs> stays up and inbounds. Right, let's see how many points she got. With a hop. One. That's the remarkable. She was about to go. She realizes she pitches the one leg up a little too much, and she just hops on one skate along that outside edge. We have a score of 50 points for Atlanta still. Naptown is at 15. Again, Naptown in the white and red. In the red and white is Atlanta. Piper Sonic comes back to the jammer line for Naptown. Merchant of Menace for Atlanta. If you're tired of sliding through slippery corners, you should try the new Radar Villain Wheel. That is RadarWheels.com. Scrum start to start off with. We have 4-3 pack advantage for Atlanta over Naptown. 
However, Merchant of Menace forced out of bounds. She recycles all the way to the back. Big hit on Piper Sonic. Yeah, nice move from I'm a Hurt You. Pulls herself back, makes Jammer have to recycle herself. But a uh, little bit of a hustle. Looks like she does get her hips past. Merchant is your lead Jammer in the red for ATL. Piper Sonic trying to complete an initial pass as Merchant of Menace about 20 feet behind the pack and closing. Here she comes, Bam Bam. Starts on a scoring run. Jammer still caught up in the middle for Naptown. Piper Sonic looking for any help, has got to do it herself. Though they already have the Jammer lap point for ATL. Oh, Merchant of Menace was, excuse me, Piper Sonic was about to get out, but Merchant of Menace, very heady play, slowed down, recycled Piper Sonic back into the pack. This is potentially going to allow Merchant of Menace to get another scoring run. Piper Sonic does now get out, but I think as there, she's about a half of a lap behind Merchant of Menace. Smart play by Menace there. Absolutely. I think she's got a great head on her shoulders as right now. She's looking to see. She slows her momentum once again, this time because she has the three wall. She's got Dora to deal with. She's got Serial Killer to deal with. She had also Shady Lane. So you realize she's not going to be able to run her way up because she does not want to get that back block. She slows herself down, waits for the opportunity. The jam is called. We now have Jam Munition on the line, number 54 Atlanta. And I believe it is Blue Messiah coming to the jammer line for the first time in some time for Naptown. Bam Bam, that was five scoreless jams in a row for Atlanta until Merchant and Menace was able to finally get on the board. There was seven points in that last jam. That takes them to 57. Naptown still 15. The whistle has blown, so the jam has started. Looks like Atlanta's doing an uh, old-school slow start to get Queen Lucia Tifa out of the penalty box. Remember, the, the pack has to move in front of the pivot line. It does, and the jammers are off, but it worked as Queen Lucia Tifa is out. We are four on three. Pack advantage for Naptown. Bit of a hustle. Blue's yep, from, from ATL, trying to make it now the four wall of white. Blue Messiah, though, sneaks along the inside edge. Is your lead jammer, then gets knocked down very quickly. She's got to get back up inbound. She's able to do that legally. Lucia Tifa in front of her, trying to slow her down. So we are going now. Jammers getting set out. That is Jam Munition for Atlanta. Taking her time to get to the penalty box. Put herself around. So we do have a power jam happening right now for Blue Messiah and Naptown. First time Atlanta has been on the wrong end of a power jam. 57-15 is the score advantage Atlanta over Naptown. This is their, their time to chip into that Bam Bam. Agent, Agent Mulder going into the penalty box for Atlanta. As is Wild Cherry, so now 4-2 pack advantage for Naptown and through for a grand slam is Blue Messiah. We've not seen her jam yet this game, but she is making quite a showing of her first jam here, Bam Bam, she as she comes in for a second scoring run. She does, and I think you've got to give a little bit of credit to timing because we've had one, two, and then three go to the penalty box, making it a little bit easier. We still have two out there. Now Lucia Tifa being sent out on a fourth minor. Not, not good for Atlanta, Bam Bam. Queen Lucia Tifa is going to have to recycle around. Blue Missile gets another scoring run. That's 15 points in that jam. Wisely calls it off. I think that was a great time to call it off. You've still got 20 seconds left on the power jam. Atlanta's completely completely out of sorts with their blocker and situation in the penalty box. Great time to call it off, start it over, and get this power jam back with, who else, a moosh boosh on the jammer line. I think that's the best place that they can be in this game right now, especially as they realize we've got a replay right here. Nice bit of a lean spin out. Well, um, Cherry with us with a really solid defensive play there, but all right, we're back to it now. A moose boosh with a nice little cut. She's out, lead jammer just like that. A moose boosh for Naptown. Jam Munition is standing in the penalty box now. Yep. Two on two in the pack. A moose boosh comes to the outside, stays up, then out, and track cut being called on. On a moose boosh. It was indeed. Lucia Tifa was on the outside edge. Got a nice bit of a block on a moose boost. She went down. She comes back in too soon, too fast, especially when you consider Lucia Tipa was waiting for her chance to go to the penalty box. The penalty box was full of blockers. Somebody stands. So great play last moment from Lucia Tipa. So again, uh, a moose boost did get lead jammer in that before prior to going to the penalty box. So we're going to go two minutes here. There's a grand slam now for Jam Munition. She's back in and just that quickly she gets around. Now she's got two. The table has definitely turned. Nice bit of an attempt from Asian Sensation. Does not make the connection. Dora on the inside holding hands. Naptown on the white trying to see as we have one, two, three in red lined up. Atlanta just a passive offense. Oh, nice, nice hit there. But number 218, Asian Sensation forces Jamunition out and all the way to the back. 
Score now 67-30, Atlanta over Naptown. Again, Atlanta in the red, Naptown in the white. Jamie Nish trying to complete a scoring pass here. We have Dora the Destroyer, the pivot for Naptown going to the box right now. We also have the Jammer standing in the box for Naptown, about to re-enter. Though Grand Slam has just happened for Atlanta, Jammer is back in play Naptown. Solid hit by Wild Cherry. That and is remarkable. Going to the penalty box for a major elbow is Wild Cherry. I think Trippendale had her eye. Oh, a moose. Boosh able to stay in bounds. She pivoted inside to outside. Scoring points there. Remember, Bam Bam, she was on a scoring pass prior to going to the penalty box. Absolutely. So both jammers now on a scoring pass. Three seconds left. And Moose Boosh is getting up. She's trying to score points before the whistle blows. I don't think she got there, but she was trying, trying really hard for those last few spots. Asian sensation going to the penalty box on that last pass. We want to remind you, you can get your tournament merchandise and celebrate what's happening right here. Like this beautiful replay. Jamination gets knocked to the inside. Nice bit of a hustle. Napton realizes, pulls herself back. Tournament merchandise, all four 2012 region playoffs, and of course championships is available at the WFTDA merch booth. If you can't be here, go to WFTDA.com to get more. All right, Piper Sonic in the white for Naptown. Merch of the Menace in the red for Atlanta. Two on two in the in the pack, blocker-wise, and Merchant of Menace gets outside. She pushed her way through. She's out for lead jammer. 30 feet, though, behind her, and closing is Piper Sonic. Pack looking a little thin out there. We just have four, and then there were three. Well, we've got one standing, so we're going to go from four to three to four. Very quick moving pack mm -hmm. as the pack comes into the story out of turn four. Everyone hits the ground, and Merchant of Menace gets past one. One's worth four. Four points there for Merchant of Menace makes the score now 80 to 35. Atlanta over Naptown with just under eight minutes left in the first half. Agent Maldor gets a little bit confused up there with Ozzy Kamikaze, takes herself out, also takes out the other part of the pack, which is just the one blocker for Naptown. So as we see right here, no regrets on the line in the red for Atlanta. And of course, Made in America in the white, number 76 for Naptown getting behind the other jammer. We have a two on two pack and the whistles are underway. Made America moves along the inside, then push yourself around on the out. No regrets, waits to see if a hole will open itself up. Oh, Very but calm. No regrets, almost had an outside line. Made in America closed it. No regrets does get through. No regrets goes to the penalty box, Bam Bam. Power jam now for Naptown. I believe it's a fourth minor track cut is the call from Judge Knott. Yes, it is. It was a fourth minor on No regrets. So yeah. power jam, Naptown. Nice little bit of move from 73. Alas, insane. You are WFTD president, by the way. It was just a little too late. Jammer still goes over to the penalty box. We now have Jammer coming around. Nap time waiting, biding her time, seeing if there's going to be an opening. Nice bit of a lean in from Wild Cherry, but it looks like she's going to draw the... Going back to the penalty box, Bam Bam. Another major elbow. Remember, seven trips to the box, and you're out as... Made in America is out for a grand slam. On that pass, Peck. Big hole in the middle, just trying to invite trouble for Naptown, but it does not work. She zips around, makes another pass, five more points, closing that gap. Atlanta had a bit of a hop, but Naptown is trying to get it with six, 17 left to play in our first half. And America works her way towards the front, and knocked out of bounds. She's gonna have to recycle back. How far? Oh, big collision in turn three. Made America back up at Queen Lucia Tifa. She's able to get around her. Nice move to the inside, and up should be another grand slam for Made in America. Bam Bam, that makes the score now 80 to 50. After eight jams, it was 50 to nothing. As we've got an official timeout, beautiful replay. Here we see the two jammers going head to head. Wild Cherry, no, excuse me, not Wild Cherry. Alas, insane. Alas, that was insane. Her Got in the way, and that's again where you're going to see that cut right there. You can see Judge Knott coming up with that just right there. Minor cut. Minor track cut, but it was the fourth minor. Went to the penalty box. That's just what's devastating. <laughs> that's what happens. We want to thank the following WFTDA partners. Fast Girl Skates, Sisu Mouth Guards, Five on Five, Derby Skins, helping us bring this replay to you right now. We've got Jammer. Here we see that. This is, this is the huge collision at the end. Again, Alas Insane involved in that, comes back making contact. Want to continue to thank our WFTDA partners, Derby Skins, Five Stride Skate Shop, Sin City Skates, and Cruise Skate Shop, among others. 
So again, Bam Bam, after seven jams, the score was 50 to nothing. 50 to nothing, Atlanta over Naptown. It is now 80 to 50 in the course of about seven, nine jams. Naptown's come roaring back. I, I, I was ready to write them off for the dead. Atlanta was dominating them in every facet of the game. And Naptown clearly, clearly woken up and is playing a solid, solid effort here. Well, credit also has to be given a little bit to Naptown because they didn't even need to call a timeout for that. Both of these teams still have their timeouts, so they were able to regroup on the fly. Didn't need to slow the momentum of one to pick up on their own. So again, credit goes out to the bench as well as the players for that. We're still in the middle of our official timeout. We'll get some reasoning for you as soon as we can. Don't forget, folks, if you want to talk to us on the Twitters, it's hashtag talk to WFTDA. That's talk the numeral to WFTDA. We'd love to hear from you if you're having a watch party in some exotic location, watching the fabulous high-quality feed here on WFTDA.tv. We'd love to hear about that as well. We know that Sweden has tuned in. Australia has tuned in. We're going Wichita, to Kansas tuned in. <laughs> they should. We, they did. They did. So I'm going to look at the penalties here for just a moment. Atlanta, if I go down quickly, I've got a 2 one, three, one, one, one two. But not to be outdone, you look over on Naptown, you have 3 two, one, two, one, one, two. It's not quite binary, but it's about the same idea, is that they look like penalties have affected both of these teams. And I think that's what we saw from the very beginning. As, as we see on the, on the feed there, Bam Bam, the, the new official game of the WFTDA <laughs> fans, their official timeouts, everyone plays along with the jam ref. The officials game, the slide whistle as we like to call it. And, and, and why not? So here we are, Bam Bam. Five minutes, 51 seconds left in this first half. Atlanta with 80 points in the red. Naptown with 50 points in the white. Amuse Bush is jamming for Naptown, standing in the penalty box for Atlanta, wearing the jammer stars. No regrets. So we've got a very, very small power jam left in this jam. Well, with about six minutes, we're going to get at least three more opportunities to see what will happen. And Amuse Bush making care of this one right there out the get-go. She is going to be your lead jammer for Naptown. Pack moving very excitedly after that. Waiting to see if Atlanta can break through that front. But there's a two-wall. Again, strong defense from those two. Dora at the front, along with Asian sensation Naptown. Strong defense. Oh, and Amuse Bush comes around on the outside. No one was there. Looks like it's all five points. All natural Kobe beef grand slam for Amuse Bush. Wild Cherry trying to catch back up. That was the pivot for Atlanta getting right back in to bust Asian sensation away from the back, though not very useful at that particular moment because the jammer is all the way on the other side of the track. Amuse Bush now coming in within about 10 feet of the pack as Norgretz is through on her initial pass. As Amuse Bush finishes the scoring run, checks Nora Gretz's position and calls it off. Bam Bam, 80 to 59 at Naptown, climbing back into this game. And I don't know if you folks saw that. At the beginning of that last jam, the Naptown blockers immediately upon the first whistle, the second whistle to spring the jammers, yes. strung all of their blockers back, forcing a so nice replay here as Amuse Bush able to cut through on the inside. What that allowed was force the Atlanta jammer to come way back almost to the um, apex of turn three and four before she was able to re-enter behind the pack. Smart play by Naptown. I think I think exactly that. We're seeing uh, power now from Merchant. Once again, Naptown, excuse me, Atlanta. Merchant of Medicine for Atlanta. Piper Sonic in for Naptown. And Merchant of Menace works her way towards the front, but the Naptown blockers are there with her. I'm a hurt you. Last line of defense for Naptown cannot hold. Lee Jam goes to Atlanta. Merchant of Menace coming back around half track now. Jammer still looking for any assistance. Naptown now gets pushed out, has to recycle as Jammer comes through for Atlanta. Going to be able to pick up, hopefully, all legal points available, and that is five more. So both, both Jammers are out, about 15 feet separate to Jammers. Merchant of Menace in front of Piper Sonic. Very fast moving pack. The delay here kind of it, it definitely to Naptown's advantage. They only have two blockers on the pack in the pack right now. All four of Atlanta blockers. As Merchant of Menace gets around one, I believe, calls it off. And the one is worth three with the two ghost points. On that last official review, Bam Bam, Atlanta burned their official review questioning a high block. There was no high block called by the ref, and the no call, the lack of a call, stands. Indeed. We have Atlanta 88 points, Naptown at 59. Three minutes left. Again, the story just seven jams in was Atlanta run away game. That very quickly reversed itself to the point now 21 points, 20, 
Oh, I got to add an eight there. 29 points. We've got Jammunition going against Made in America, and Lee Jammer is Made in America. Looks like Made in America paused briefly trying to recycle Jammunition, unable to do so. Now she does, knocks her out of bounds. Was it long enough to allow the pack to catch up? Oh, almost at the cost of Made in America getting pulled into the pack as well. Sometimes you've got you've to make that effort, and she did. Didn't pay off in the long run, but the short distance made something happen. Pack. She did She did get some separation there, Bam Bam. Yep. Does call it off. That was a great gamble. It didn't work out in the end, but it was really fun to see Made in America really, really playing aggressively there, there as the jammer. We you, see here the replay. Right here. Got Remember nice she, position as she comes over through the apex. Now you can see as Made in America wants to bring Jamination back into the pack, but she's got to be aware of coming into the pack herself. Right at the end of the replay, you could sort of see her eyes look up and see, uh-oh, here comes the Atlanta blockers. Maybe I should start going. Exactly. That's the moment that she knocks her out of bounds. And you can see she holds up thinking, do I wait for her? But that's when the pack was coming back. So it looks like we have a timeout now being called by Atlanta. We do indeed. And I can also thank the rest of our WFTDA partners, Blood and Thunder Magazine, S1 Helmets, Wicked Skatewear, Bond Boots, Vanilla Skates, and Derby for All. So here's where we are, Bam Bam. One minute, 48 seconds left in this first half. Atlanta has just used their first of their three timeouts. Again, it's Atlanta in the red, Naptown in the white. 88 for Atlanta, 59 for Naptown. And, and, and we've said this several times now. This has become quite the exciting game from 50 to nothing to a 29-point lead right now for Atlanta. And, you know, coming into this game, I definitely thought Atlanta had the edge. I thought that their road here was much harder. They came in as the sixth seed in the South, defeated the number three seed, defeated the number two seed, and almost had Texas the number one seed. They had them on the road for four of power jams, untimely power jams by Atlanta, allowed Texas to come in away with the win. Yeah, whereas, at the very end of that game, by the, the way. The very end. And whereas, whereas Naptown, in their third place game, went against a very um, short Ohio squad, really skating with only 11 skaters, and that was their ticket here. Yes. So I thought Atlanta clearly with the advantage, but Naptown is showing they, they are no fluke, and they, they, they definitely came here to play. It, All right, got a moose boost back on the jammer line for Naptown. Merchant of Menace at the back of the pack and red for Atlanta, though a moose boost, your lead jammer with a minute 39 in this period. Merchant of Menace trying to get out. Naptown with a solid three. Now a two all in front of her. Merchant of Menace comes through on the inside. She is out half of a lap behind Amuz Bush. Only two on two where you got a diet pack out there. Naptown slows it down. Amuz Bush cuts around and quickly calls it off. Solid play by Naptown. That was four more points. And again, I think that's smart. Better to take that little bit of a victory now than try and run Absolutely. out some clock. Absolutely. Because you could lose that. Atlanta, now their gap closing. They set at 88. Uh, 63 points to Naptown. I'd like to say hello to our fans watching on WFTDA.tv in Norway, Canada. We'd like to say eh to our friends in Canada. Bienvenidos to los amigos in Mexico y España. And um, in Afghanistan, Bam Bam. We, I'm not even going to try. We're praying for you. All right, Spain we got, as well. Thank you so much for tuning in here on WFTDA.tv. We got Made in America is out for Lee Jammer before she even got to turn one for Naptown going up against... That is Nora Gretz for Atlanta. Nora Gretz still trying to complete our initial pass, Bam Bam. Made America's got some great track lead going about halfway around right now. Pack's just moving very quickly. Made America not doing her uh, darndest to catch up at this point because the clock is in her favor. But Jammer is now out for Atlanta, so she's got to make some sort of effort in before Atlanta can get back around and score some points on this pass. So Made in America now working on a scoring run. Forced out of bounds, calls it off. Ten seconds left. We'll see if either team feels like using a timeout to get one more jam in the half. And Naptown, Naptown. says yes. And why not, Bam Bam? The momentum is definitely in their favor. Yes. The last four jams, excuse me, the last five jams, they've had lead jammer in four of those. I, I like that timeout. You've, you've got all three. Why not use one now? You've got the momentum. See if you can get this. 19 point lead, excuse me, 21 point lead down just a little yep. bit further. Yeah, I think that was a smart call. Caesar runs out very quickly, calls for the time. Then we've got Atlanta out there talking to Professor Murder, our head ref for this game. 
Again, we look quickly at our penalties, more or less where we were before, just another one or two, but evenly distributed to both teams. No one in any real penalty trouble. Three. Well, you know, we talked about penalties. Wild Cherry, who had three trips to the box about 15 minutes ago in clock time, still sitting with three trips to the box, so she's definitely corrected her issues. Azen Sensation, one of the stronger blockers, if not the strongest blocker, along with Ima Herchu, definitely a power blocker for yes. Naptown, both with three trips to the box each. Member seven, and you're gone. Yep. So this will be our last jam of this half. We have Atlanta at 88, Naptown at 67. And we're going to get about underway any moment. Amuse Bush comes to the jammer line for Naptown in the whites. Jammunition for Atlanta in the red. Looks like uh, Swift Plate Susie's taking your intentional fourth minor poodle cougar. And we're off, man. Bam Bam, as the clock ticks to zero. This is the last jam, and Amuse Bush is going to go out as lead jammer. <laughs> she does. Free and clear on that inside line. Everybody moves to the right, and she breezes up. She is out looking for Jammer for Atlanta. Pack moving not too tightly, but so quick. Takes a moment to find Jammunition. She has now caught one to pass for Naptown. Almost able to do it. Not quite, though. We've got Jammer coming up for Naptown. Solid defense by Azen Station up front on Jammunition. Is able, she's still able to hold her. Second lap now with Jammunition trying to get out. It moves Bush now trying to get up front to score some points, Bam Bam. Great work from Atlanta's Agent Mulder holding back the jammer for Naptown twice, getting a push back. Amuse Bush almost able to get it. Alas, insane, makes a move to the inside of the pivot for Atlanta. Hey, recycling, Amuse Bush sets herself at the back again. Minor back block called on Amuse Bush as she calls it off. Three more points on that pass. Bam Bam, we talked about a smart timeout. We talked about momentum. Uh, nor that we're not quite aware that it's halftime. So, I, and, and I think that was a great timeout. That makes it now one, two, three, four, five, six jams in a row to close out the half where Atlanta was unable to score any points. You have to wonder about the psychological impact of that going into the halftime. I, I, I mean, if you're the Atlanta coach, what do you say to your team? You know, if you're the Atlanta coach, I think what you have to really rely on is the strength that they've come into this game with. The idea that they've been able to power their way through, that momentum has slowed down, but it really hasn't slowed the strength of the team. I think that you have Naptown coming in, changing up their strategy. Atlanta continuing to push forward. I think what they need to do is just keep pushing harder, but finding different ways to do that. Because Naptown finds that, counters it, edges closer. Finds it, counters. So I think Atlanta, you just have to keep changing. It's been quite a game so far. <laughs> definitely, definitely has. So Naptown at 70, Atlanta at 88. Closest we've seen these two teams so far. Hello and welcome back to the 2012 championships. Want to say hello from the Georgia World Congress Center. We are here on our last game of Friday. First elimination rounds going. We've got a game here between the Atlanta Roller Girls and the Naptown Roller Girls. Atlanta is at 88. Naptown is at 70. We so... The first half, uh, really, Bam Bam, was a tale of two halves. As we said earlier, 50 to nothing was the score for Atlanta over Naptown after uh, six jams. And then Naptown came roaring back. The score stands now 88 to 70. Really interesting to kind of see the jammer dynamics. Made, uh, excuse me, uh, Merchant of Menace for Atlanta jammed eight times, was able to get lead jammer six of those. Mm -hmm. However, Jammunition jamming for Atlanta jamming six times, only lead once. Yes. Um, no regrets in jamming five times, lead jammer none of those. Maine America, conversely, for Naptown, jammed six times. She got lead jammer four of those. Amuse Bush jammed seven times, got lead five. <laughs> really the huge difference. Piper Sonic out there jamming four. Naptown as well was only able to get lead jammer in one of her five trips wearing the jammer star. That's it's such a huge component there is, 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 as we've talked about many times, I don't need to go through it here, the, yep. the getting the lead jammer status. Well, and if you look at the way that the points are laid out, you've got three from each team doing all of the heavy lifting. You have Amuse Bush has picked up 22. Again, we've got 28 for Made in America. And then you look, and it's 15 for Lumisaya, 5 for Piper Sonic. So really, two being the strongest components for Naptown. But you have a nice mix, 30 for Merchant of Menace, 33 for Jammunition, 24 for No Regrets. So Atlanta spreading the wealth a little bit. But again, that has started to stall the last couple of minutes in this game, as they still sit at 88, where they've been close to for quite some time. And don't forget, folks, if you're uh, playing along on the WFTDA bracket bonanza, we'll be updating those shortly after the game. The winner of the individual championship tournament is going to win a jammer up video or board game, excuse me, which sounds pretty awesome, as well as some high quality DVDs of all the games here. And then we'll have an overall grand champion who's going to get a trip to the 2013 championships, which we're going to find out where that is shortly. 
courtesy of Union Vacations. Indeed, we're going to find all that information out later tonight. Now remember, we have Atlanta playing Naptown. The winner goes on to play Gotham tomorrow at 4 p.m. Eastern. You know, the game is hard fought now to think we've got Gotham as our next opponent. Can be a little intimidating. Doesn't look like either of those teams focusing on that right now. All right, we're back. The first whistle has blown. Neither team inclined to move forward as both teams are happy to run some of the penalty clock. Merchant of Menace is jamming for Atlanta in the red. Made in America jamming for Naptown in the white. Slow moving pack just about to cross the pivot line. Yep. There they do. That should release the jam. Oh, excuse me. One Naptown blocker still in the back door of the Destroyer. And we're off Bam Bam. Merchant of Menace, Menace. is yep. out. She was pacing nicely right there with the other jammer, but she comes out along the inside line as your lead jammer. Still got the jammer caught at the back of the pack right now for Naptown. Gets a nice bit of a whip up into the middle. Has the three wall of red for Lana. Tries to push through, holds the inside, gets a nice spin, and gets through. <laughs> as M Merchant of Menace with a jammer takedown on Made in America in turn two for all five points. Made in America was about to get out of the pack, but Merchant of so Menace able close. to knock her down. Oh, it's got to be demoralizing as, again, Made in America is still working on her initial pass. Bam, bam. Here comes Made in America on her second scoring run. And very quickly, the pack slows down, if you will. The idea was that we have jammers coming around. No one's going to give any assistance to Naptown's jammer. She's got to make a push. Wild Cherry, I like that backward lean. She leans into the jammer, holds her arms completely out of the way. It's all legal blocking. Holds back Made in America. She is finally on her pass right there. Uh, Atlanta trying to open the pack up a little bit, but they've got one last blocker to get past. Oh, Ace and Sensation with a nice hit forced to Merchant of Menace out. I, did she get the point? She did not. So, Asian Sensation, who's skating right now with four trips to the penalty box, clean legal hit, able to prevent Merchant of Menace from scoring that last point. Makes the score now 96-70. to 70. So, Atlanta with a nice showing out in this first jam of the seven, second half. 96-70, Atlanta in the red, Naptown in the white. Again, penalty is not really a factor for either of these teams. Asian sensation at four, serial killer at four for Naptown, and those are our two highest across the board. All right, we've got Holly Seidel comes back to the jammer line for Atlanta, and G Rocket for Naptown. G Rocket's in the back. Holly Seidel is up front. Holly Seidel is going to the penalty box. Holly Seidel with a major forearm, Bam Bam. We were just talking at the half that they have kept her from that jam position. For most of the first half, they bring her in, and that is what happens. Very unfortunate for Atlanta. Power jam situation for Naptown trying to take good advantage of it. Way yeah. spread out as the pack 20 feet. They've got to let G-Rocket go. G-Rocket is out. G-Rocket is not lead. Looks like she had a minor track cut, so we're going to go full two minutes here. 40 seconds left on this power jam as G-Rocket begins the scoring pass. Bam, bam. She comes through. One is peeling off for Naptown right now. Piper Sonic going to the penalty box. There's one standing in the box for Atlanta. But... Naptown's Jammer just having a difficult oh, time. Wild Cherry again with the chest bump leaning in. Out of play is the call, and a, uh, yep, that's a major out of play on Wild Cherry, and that's a grand slam for G Rocket. The uh, crowd here not very happy that Atlanta got sent to the box, but I think that, as you can see at home, definitely a 20 feet. Ref it's made the 40. Yeah, ref made the call, has to go. Now we got another pass of five points right there happening. And Queen Lucia is, oh, G Rocket attempted to call it off, and the Atlanta coaches. <laughs> was on the track wanting to uh, talk to the refs. Minor illegal procedure as um, ref did not call it off. Heads up play there by Judge Not Both jammers are on the track now. Virgin Holly Saddle forced out of bounds. This is her initial pass as G-Rocket scores another Grand Slam Bam Bam. It's good to see nobody got in any trouble because we had actually members from Naptown's bench run into the middle because they thought that that was the conclusion of the jam. It was not. There's still at least 15 seconds left to play. Naptown trying to get it around to score as they just get through being waved off and they get pass. Solid hit by Queen Lucia Tifa. Both jammers now on it as Queen Lucia Tifa goes to the penalty box. Both jammers on a scoring run. Three seconds left in the jam. Lucia Tifa can't quite go yet because there are two people sitting now. One is going to stand. And now the jam ends and the Atlanta coach comes out to the infield. Bam, bam. What, you know, we talk, we, we did not mention there, Holly Seidel, one of the stalwart Atlanta jammers, only jammed twice in the first half, yes. the first, second jam and the seventh jam. She got lead jam once, scored one point, did nothing after that from a jammer perspective. They bring her back in here. She goes to the penalty box, and that power jam allows Atlanta to score 15 points, making it now 98 to 85 with 25 minutes left as this becomes an official timeout. 
for your league's printing and promotional needs, you should hit up printcographics.com. That is printcographics.com. Oh, solid hit there by Queen Lucia Tifa. You know, and bam, bam, back to the, to the penalty box situation. Right now, there are three Atlanta blockers in the penalty box, one standing, two sitting, so only one currently on the track. How many white shirts do we see out there, Bam Bam? One, two, three, four, I believe five. Yes, all four blockers out there for Naptown. So Merchant of Menace will be jamming for <laughs> Atlanta against Amuz Bouche. If you can hear the audio of the uh, The slide whistle in full effect right here, as you can almost see on your screen right a little bit right there. There we go. In the new WFTDA play, you can play along at home, folks. If you're out there in Spain, Mexico, Afghanistan, Canada, or Norway, why not play along at home? The game score 98 for Atlanta, 85 for Naptown. As we saw, we had a low block major for Queen Lucia at the end of that last jam. She could not quite go to the penalty box while play was happening, but we did have the pivot stand-up that provided a seat at the end of the jam. Lucia Tifa was over the penalty box. We see a little bit of a replay happening right here, and that is exactly why she got sent to that box. Major low block. You know, Queen Lucia Tifa now, who has five trips to the penalty box, and as the official timeout continues, not quite sure what they're talking about. Queen Lucia Tifa, if you recall, from the South Central regions, was ejected for a uh, major block to the head or low block. Either way, she Either was one, ejected yeah. from the game. There was no uh, further penalty. She was not forced to miss a game. I'm sure Naptown right now is wishing that Texas had further pursued that claim. <laughs> Be that as it may, we hope to get some clarification from our jam refs as soon as we can. Iron Doll Clothing has custom uniforms for the modern roller girl and the referee lifting and separating since 2009. IronDollClothing.com. Remember, talk to WFTDA. Feel free to let us know what you are thinking. We will get translators if you are from Spain or Norway. We can try Norway. We'll probably find somebody here. Yeah, the roller derby. So a Minnesotan apparently will be able to help us out. 25-21 <laughs> in our second half left to play. Lots of time on the clock. Looking at 13-point difference between. We go to our books here. We had Naptown come in as the number three seed. Of course, Atlanta, very close game coming in at the number two. If you look at the lifetime WFTDA championship records, you don't have Naptown coming in until 2011 with a loss right away from Philly. Atlanta's but, never made it. Exactly. This is the first show for Atlanta. Now, they've come really close, Bam Bam. 2010, yes. they um, lost in the third place game, finished fourth. 2009, they were in the fifth place game. So they've been very close. They've been right there. This year, they finally able to break through. Getting some clarification here in just a moment. I, I, I believe they're they're clarifying the illegal procedure that was called on the Naptown Jam Naptown Jammer G Rocket. Mm -hmm. She attempted to call off the jam. Judge not jam ref for Naptown did not call off the jam though. Had he called off the jam in response to her attempt to call off the jam, it would have been a major. Yes. However, he didn't call it off, so it's only a minor. I'm not sure how much further explanation that should require. I'm not exactly sure. I'm sure if you're Atlanta at this point, you want to take as long as you can, look for any potential, I don't even want to call it loophole, but just saying this is what happened because you had players enter the track while the game was still in play. The jam yeah, was still on. There was the, and, and, and where that would become an issue then is had the officials been required to call off the jam. Yes, which they, they didn't. They, there was never a safety hazard. There were players on the track. Imp impeded they, play. Right, they quickly cleared. Yes. So I don't think that we have a factor there. But like we've said, Atlanta, they come out really strong, and it just seems like they're they're keeping their lead, but not by much, as it's now 13 points again. Atlanta at 98. I think you have to work every angle that you can. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Naptown has just been chipping away, chipping away, chipping away. As I've said, ad nauseum, 50 now. Queen Lucia Tifa now with six trips to the box. She may, I would speculate, either she had a... Well, I, my, my guess is she probably picked up two penalties on that and last and jam. Yeah, it might have been the, uh, the accumulation of a fourth. We don't know, but she went into the box. Oh, no, wait. Getting the correction. It looks like she is still at five. So if you're watching along with, uh, with the Napster Ooh. stats at home, five to six to five. But still, with 25 minutes left in the game, that's dangerously close yes, either way. It is. Well, and you look at Asian Sensation at four. Serial Killer still at four. Now, Wild Cherry is at four, who's been strong, strong defense. Number six for Atlanta in the red. So you've got a couple of people who are, you know, pressing closer and closer to that bubble. Lots of time to go over it. 
All right, so the uh, official timeout is done. Again, Merchant of Menace jamming for Atlanta in the red with 98 points. That is a moose Boosh jamming for Naptown with 85 points in the white. We're going to get some uh, clarification here for just a moment. We will. Again, please stick with us at the end of the game. We have some exciting news to reveal. I don't want to hear it for you now, news. but ooh, you do want to stick around. It might involve your travel plans for the 2013 WFGDA Championships. Could be. Could Again, be. one blocker out there for Atlanta. There's the call of Moose Bush on the outside line. It's wide open, and she's out for lead jammer. One blocker, impossible to cover. Four lanes, bam, bam. Nice bit of work getting around. I'm a hurt you. No, triple zero on the end. Though we do have Alas Insane coming in, not able to get in front of the Naptown Jammer now. Some good speed. Both jammers are in moving forward, waiting to see if Atlanta's going to find any course. Two in white have to move over. She gets the inside line and, of course, gets waved off. Meanwhile, Amuse Bouche finishes the scoring run, quickly calls it off, wants to preserve as much of the blocker advantage as she can. We're going to get some clarification here from Double H. Well, so, so many things were going on in that um, official timeout right there. They were discussing uh, two primary things. It looks as though Queen Lucy Tifa had actually needed to report to the box um, for three majors, I believe, and they were trying to figure out um, if that was actually accurate. Um, we'll take a look at that and go back and do some penalty accounting there. And then there was a question of whether or not there was a false start with some of the skaters coming onto the track during the jam. That was actually not the case. They were not false stars, so everything was good there. As we have our action on the track, Jamunition in the red for Atlanta is out as your lead jammer, Made in America, not too far behind, shakes the pivot. She is now going to get out. Number 76 now seeing what looks like a minor forearm on that pat on that breakthrough. Both are been able to score. We've got now Jamunition going to the outside. Looks like there might have been some contact that happened, but she goes down. She's able to pick up two points, calls the jam, though, very swiftly. Looks like she's going to be able to hold Naptown at a zero. So now Atlanta is at 100 points. Naptown is at 89. We have 23 and a half to play. Uh, Holicidal is back out on the jam line right now. You see that replay. You know, $20 is worth seeing Jamunition take out a ref in high quality feet. It really is. Especially All in slow All day, every day. The slow, slow motion, motion zebra. You know, you can, you can go back and watch it on the archives on WFTDA.tv, but nothing is that fresh moment in your head. You're going to put a smile on your face, off to sleep tonight. Holly Seidel jamming for Atlanta. Piper Sonic for Naptown. Holly Seidel looking to redeem herself. Piper Sonic looking to get the jam. Comes out of bounds. No pass, no penalty. But Holly Seidel is out. Holly Seidel is lead jammer for Atlanta. She's got to feel a little redemption on that last trip out. Not as strong as she is finishing right now. 189, of course. Oh, excuse me. Yep. yep. Holly Seidel is lead jammer. Piper Sonic is out. Holly Seidel looks for a scoring pass now. Bam Bam. Waiting. And calls it off as Piper Sonic was approaching. Good time to call it off. Looks like she's got three points. Yep, she's able to pick up uh, the one in the penalty box because that is where Queen Lucia is still staying. So she gets two passes plus the extra right there gives it the three. So back to the Queen Lucia Tifi situation. Nap uh, Rickster's stats currently showing five uh, penalties. The whiteboard, as, as we remember from Double H, said that the trip was over potentially three majors. Looks like she's got six trips. So we'll, we'll try to get some further clarifications. I believe she's still sitting in the penalty box. So potentially one trip away from fouling out Bam Bam. She is. We saw that happen with Ringster earlier. We'll update you as that happens. We've got now Jammers moving forward. Merchant of Menace is up, out, and lead. Jammer for Atlanta, the Merchant of Menace. Meanwhile, Amuz Bush, jamming for Naptown, is able to get out. About 40 feet separate the Jammers. We've got a thin pack for Atlanta. Only two blockers, three for Naptown. Very quick moving pack, Bam Bam. We've got people trying to spread out a little bit now, trying to come back together. Wild Cherry trying to get in the middle of it, seeing if she can make any kind of assistance as we had someone go to the penalty box. Two and two in the box apiece. Merchant of Menace comes in, scores three more points and calls it off. And Atlanta starting to move back away, starting to spread out the gap a little bit. Two jams in a row, they've gotten lead jammer. Two jams in a row, they were able to score three points to none for Naptown. Makes the score now 106 to 89. Atlanta in the white, Naptown in the red. Just over 21 minutes left in the game. And, and based on the game that I've been watching the last few jams, it's not as though there's any easy thing to point to and say, this is why Atlanta has started to pick up momentum. You both, both these teams still holding nice speed, still holding nice power. It's just advantages, I think, are being taken better by Atlanta. And like we saw right there. Jamunition is out for lead jammer, but Made in America is jamming for Naptown, and Made in America is the jammer in the lead. 
Both jammers working hard, Bam Bam. We do still have two on two in the pack, though we've got a nice even pace happening, a nice little pace line it almost looks like right now. I, I, I believe Jamie Nation just trying to run some clock here. You've got the lead and you've got a pack disadvantage blocker-wise, so. Yep, the scout sniper just comes back in for Atlanta. So now you're essentially burning nap challenge penalty clock. You are burning game clock, but you're burning their penalty time, so kind of a... a well, here's, here's the question. Is that the smartest thing to do? You still have 20 minutes left. You've only got... I would have called it off earlier. 17 points. I mean, Atlanta's at 106, Naptown's at 89. Yeah, this is not the time to go into a prevent defense, if you will. You've, you've got to block your advantage, call it, and start off with as much of that as you can. Mm -hmm. I, would, I would tend to agree. Holocidal back on the jam line in the red for Atlanta. G-Rocket, not someone that you see very often for Naptown, but has been effective in this game so far. 15 points you scored so far in this game. Holly Seidel has scored six as we've got an official timeout. So Bam Bam, let's talk a little bit about what's happening at the end of this game. We will have a very special announcement of where, where the next year's WFTDA playoffs will be held. Remember, there's no longer any regions. No. What will we be doing instead of regions? Divisions. Divisions. That's, Divisions. Right. That's just right. No more boundaries. No, no more, more boundaries. geographic issues in our way. So we're going to see the best 40 teams in the Division One of the WFTDA come together, play the same format with you know four sets of 10 teams playing. At the end of this game, we will have a very special announcement to show you where you're going to be traveling in 2013, as well as your championship. All right, Holly Settle against G Money, G Rocket. Excuse me. I'd love to see G Money out there skating. That would be fantastic. It is G-Rocket indeed in the uh, white of Naptown at the back. Nice bit of a move there at the front. Shady Lane gets a push. Does not hold long enough. And though. a major track cut. Major track cut on Holly Seidel. I, I saw her skate go out. I don't know that she passed the blocker while she did it. Either way, G-Rocket is now the only jammer on the track right now for Naptown. She's not lead jammer, so we're going to go two minutes here. It looked like Shoveler almost was going to call her lead, but as he did it, crowd swells up and gets the, the no. She and that's, sent. that's a grand slam for G. Rocket makes the score now 106-94. And Atlanta, the penalty box, continuing to kill him. There's another grand slam, 106-99. Well, and think about it. Right there, you have Queen Lucia Tifa, one of the only people out there. She has got to watch herself as she is sitting dangerously close to having to leave this game while Cherry goes to the, the box, but it gets sent and, away. And you see right there, Bam Bam, while Cherry and Queen Lugitiva really had to let her go. They weren't quite sure where the pack was, and you know they're thinking about penalties. While they Cherry score. also at five. 106-104, here comes G-Rocket. Nice hit by Queen Lugitiva. G-Rocket doesn't want to get any kind of penalty <laughs> right now. No, but again, neither does Queen. I think you got to play a little bit smarter. Nice work from Shady Lane at the front. Gets Queen Lugitiva out. The wild uh, Scott G Sniper. Gets back in, gets a nice bit of a hit, excuse me. Holly Settle is out of the penalty box. Waiting to see if we'll have a lead change. Two points right now. They've got to get through the pack and see. Holly Settle not on a scoring run now, Bam Bam. This should seconds. be her initial pass. And we are about to see a lead change, Bam Bam. It's going to be coming down in about 10 seconds time. Nice bit of a commitment pushing through for G-Rocket. Not giving up. Staying on her feet. Penalty box starting to empty out. Two minutes into the jam, five points for Naptown, and with that makes the score. Should be a tie Na game. Now, Naptown, you're right. Tie game. <laughs> tie oh. game, ladies and gentlemen. 109, 109. As you see on the replay right here happening, bit of a bump out. Jammers is able to pull herself back so, in legally. So here's the hit. You're seeing the replay right here. Kind of takes a hit. Holly Saddle sort of takes a lazy step. That foot did go out of bounds. And, and that was enough for the track cut. That was a track cut but major because all it was it the takes. last line of defense. All it takes is that, that was, little that bit That was of a energy. lazy step. That was a lazy step by Holly Seidel. Had she focused a little bit more and stayed in the balance, we would not have had that power jam. Well, again, I mean, think about it. You're resetting your balance. You've got someone coming in, especially you've got the, the power and size of Shady Lane with that bit of a bump. You're, you're right. I think her foot just went too wide. If she could have pulled it in, but, uh, you know, All it's, right. it's that balance. We're back to it. A moose boost jamming for Naptown. We've got jammunition for Atlanta. 109-109. Just under 17 minutes left in the game. Amuz Bush stays inbound. She's out front. Amuz Bush is lead jammer for Naptown. Nice bit of a turn of the skate. She's able to keep herself inbounds on that outside line. Does not want to repeat what's happening. Jammunition has a uh, free pass as she gets the zone of engagement. Now we have got Amuz Bush about 20 feet before she gets the pack, but the pack 
running away as much as they can. Yeah, Naptown trying to very quickly uh, move the pack along. We are four on four out there. Everyone is skating. Moose Moose is up in scoring points. Does a nice little twist, calls it off. Three points for Naptown. No points for Atlanta. Score now 112 for Naptown. 109, and for the first time in this game, it took them 44 minutes, Bam Bam, but Naptown has the lead. There are some very happy fans that we're going to see this happen one more time in our replay here. Amuz Bush again so good at just swiveling around Keep on her feet. hips. That's that splaying of the feet. She's able to maintain forward momentum and hold in bounce as she turns the one to make sure she does not push the other foot out. Hypersonic jamming for Naptown. Nora Gretz for Atlanta. Two uh, two skaters, one for each team. Merchant of Menace and Made in America both poodling. So we're going to be three on three in the pack. Very wise. Hypersonic 43 waiting alongside Nora Gretz. Waiting for that last toe of Atlanta to get past the pivot line, stretching it. Now, why is Atlanta not moving forward? You don't have the lead anymore. You, neither team has a pack advantage. I, I don't understand that play. And I don't think that you'd even want to slow the momentum of Naptown because that's not really where this game is at. But we're going to see what happens as they come through. Looks oh, like Piper Sonic was on the inside line. It was open. The door was there. And she is lead jammer. However, Bam Bam just out of the pack now is Nora Gretz. Looks like there was an issue with a multiplayer block. It was minor, so nobody being sent to the penalty box. Right there, Door of the Destroyer saying, I'm back here. Nobody's seeing it was not a cut. Oh, looks like another pass there. Four points, and that was the, the time. Oh, looks like Atlanta now calling a timeout. I think probably the smart play. Smart time to call timeout. Yeah. Absolutely. You've got two timeouts still. Want to keep one in your pocket for the very end if you need it. Yeah, I would agree with that. If you want to uh, see how skates can move you forward, Pilot F16 plate system, pick your price and performance. Brought to you by Adam Wheels, a proud partner and official wheel of the WFTDA. AdamWheels.com. Also, Green Monster Roller Sports. The wait is over. It is finally here. The all-new Antic Spider Skate is going to be available in December. See it at GreenMonster.com. That is Green Monster with no vowels. So again, let's reset here, Bam Bam, as we see a beautiful replay there of Piper Sonic coming in to the pack. She is lead jammer. Just comes outside the inside, checks the position of Nora Gretz and calls it off. With that jam, the score stands now 116 to 109. Naptown in the white over Atlanta in the red. 15 minutes even left in this game. Remember, the winner gets to play Gotham tomorrow, and the loser, well, they're done for the weekend. It's always the nicest way to say gets to play Gotham. You know, so what's, someone will beat them someday, man, man. Exactly, and I think that's the thing to, to remember is that people look at Gotham as this powerhouse, but we've seen those close games and happening more and more frequently. And I think the way that we've seen these teams play this weekend, even on Friday, there's some fantastic potential here for Gotham's streak to come to an end here. Absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. So five seconds left, and there is the first whistle. Two blockers out there for Naptown, three for Atlanta. <laughs> and who's Bush with the psych out move? Neither team skating forward. Again, this doesn't really benefit Atlanta as much because you've got an even number. You've got both jammers in the box. Both are standing. Both come in at the same time. So there's no real benefit. You're just losing clock. A a absolutely. I, I don't see that either team is really gaining a di an advantage or losing a disadvantage. It's just, we're, well, we're burning some clock. There's fans good. rumbling just a bit. The pack does start to move forward slowly. Now, Naptown, now this is a smart play now by Naptown. Bridge it out, slow it out, make it go as long as you can, burn as much of the remaining penalty time as you can. Yeah, I think that's the smart way to go. They open a, a hole to see if they can get their jammer through. Does not quite work. Oh! But able to get through anyway. A moves Boosh with a nice move on the inside. She is out. But Jammunition out as well, Bam Bam. But 30 to 40 feet separating the jammers. Four on four in the pack, and here comes Amuz Bush on a scoring run, coming into turn two with the pack. And I think Jamie Nish is doing a great job of seeing which way she can go if a hole is going to open up, though it does not. But again, and smart play Naptown. She's realizing, I don't have that push through. It could come from behind. But Jamie Nish, I'm going to call it. She gets the gain of one. So Naptown now 117 as we see a replay here. Nice move through the middle of the pack. Amuz Bush just powering. Her Look way. at the smile. smile Look on her at face. the smile on her face. It's, it's, it's got to be good to it's be a boost boost right now. All right, so we stand now 109, 117, 13 minutes left in the game. Piper Sonic comes back to the jammer line for Naptown. Merchant of Menace on the jammer line for Atlanta. Jam has begun. I think I see one blocker each sitting. And again, neither team really inclined to skate forward. 
Again, no real benefit we see from either team. You know, you're looking at, I'm hurt, she's got five. There's a couple of fours on Naptown for penalties. You've got five, five, and some threes on Atlanta. So it's not as like they, they really are worried about people engaging too roughly in this. It's just waiting to get more people in. And you can see uh, from our perspective, penalty box, we've got Naptown blocker just saying, go, go, go. There's no reason to wait. All right, Piper Sonic works her way towards the front. Merchant Menace in the back. Both team, both jammers dealing with the three wall of their opponents. Piper Sonic comes to the outside, now back to the inside. Merchant Menace just stuck in the back of the pack, Bam Bam. We've got Piper Sonic looking for any opportunity, but she has got three in red in front of her. But the inverse is happening at the back. Three in white in front of Atlanta's jammer. Nobody making any forward progress. We've got now Penalty Box coming back out. Door the Destroyer coming back in. We've also got 12 a.m. for Rebel Yellow. Atlanta. Thank you. So four on four now in the pack. Piper Sonic almost out. She's forced out of bounds. The crowd very appreciative of that effort. As Merchant Menace up around, she's trying to get outside. Good bridging happening from Napton right there, though. She is lead jammer. Merchant Menace, first time in six jams. Atlanta has had the lead jammer status. And with a nice move, that was still just her initial pass with that juke cut as he could recycle back. But she's out now in position to score points, Bam Bam. We now are looking to see where the jammer is for Napton. Happens to be. Piper Sonic is, does get out. That was the initial pass there. So that took quite a bit of time when you consider just a few seconds left. We're going to see if any points can be accrued. We're going to have a couple for Atlanta. Merchant Mendes checks Piper Sonic and calls it off. No points for Naptown. One. One point for Atlanta. That was two minutes for one point. That has got to be one of the hardest fought points. As we and, see here the uh, replay. And, and indeed we do. Jammer comes around, leans in. Dora tries to make a hit for Naptown. Shrugs it back, just pulls herself back out of the way. Atlanta able to push through. Big swoopy hits. Good. That's good derby. Yeah, one point. Well, if minutes. you connect. And 117 to 110, just under 11 minutes left in the game. Holly Seidel, she's been hot and cold tonight for Atlanta. back on the jammer line against Made in America. We'll see. Cold at first. She's now heating things up a little bit. She's got that, looks like, through the four wall in front of her as penalty boxes are now empty. Both jammers sort of knocked out, have to start again. Just solid defense out there by both teams. Main America now comes to the front, trying to push her way through. I'm a hurt you, says there was a cut. Ref says I didn't see it. Exactly, I don't think there was a cut there. Main America no, now up front. Main America is out. Made in America lead jammer for Naptown, Bam Bam. Very excited crowd here. Definitely was an Atlanta crowd starting to swing the way in Aptown. Everybody loves an underdog, though neither of these teams are really in that position. Even the match coming in, even the match coming out, as we have seven points between the two, ten minutes left. Well, with Holly Saddle still working on her initial pass, here comes Made in America now on a scoring run. And that's that's the jammer lap point. That's a grand slam for Made in America. Holly Seidel waiting to enter the pack. She's able to do that, but she's got that wall of white. She gets in about two skaters, gets pushed back out. Now seeing if she can get some assistance, but they're basically saying, we're controlling the front for you. If you can get up to us, but Naptown not going to let her do that. Holly Seidel sees an inside line. She's up and she's out. That is the initial pass now for Holly Seidel. And she's able to do that because two go to the box for Naptown. Going to make it a little bit red heavy out in the middle of the track right now. Made in America gets a spin move. Calls it, and a five-point wow. pass on that. Zero points for Atlanta. Naptown marching onward. 127, Atlanta 110. Looks like we have a uh, timeout. Bam Bam, we talked earlier about Queen Lucia Tifa, who had fouled out of, no, not, she didn't foul out of the Atlanta-Texas game. She was expelled from the Atlanta-Texas game. There's a difference. There's a difference. There absolutely is a difference. No, we're going to see Steve. a replay of the action that's happened right there. Made, Made in America Made. with that little bit of a spin move, as you can see. Catches herself, pushes past. So two. good the way she was able to spin around. There's the spin again. Could, able to control the direction of her skating, though, as she goes from front to backward skating, and then again back to front. Keeps her speed, keeps her vector going. Has it's been able solid to do that, that entire game. But we were talking again, Lucia Tifa, she was asked so nicely to leave that game in Texas, but she's getting very close to that same thing now, and that's why I think you've really kind of taken, taken the fangs out of her. She has been hitting really hard this game. Well, she was, she was sitting on the bench without her back. helmet. Of course, if she had fouled out, I believe she would have been asked to leave the area. So as she's now skating up. Nope, nope, she's still in. Sorry, nope. false alarm, folks. No, we've got to make sure I'm a hurt you also. 
uh, in that same type of trouble for Naptown, Asian Sensation as well. So we now have Wild Cherry at five. So there's a couple people with some potential, though nine minutes left to play. We've got Jammunition in the red for Atlanta. Cuts outside, cuts up now the middle, almost able to get around. Not quite there as a moose bush maybe going to make advantage, but not in time. Crowd goes wild as Atlanta lead Jammer. So Jammunition now looks to cut into the 70 point lead and she's going to have a power jam to do it as a moose boost going to the penalty box. Fourth minor track cut. Power jam now for Atlanta. Jammunition cuts through. There is one, two, three, four, five points that for Jammunition. 12 points now between these two teams. Plenty of time. She's got to keep herself smart and illegal. Comes in right there, making sure she does not get a back block. Pushes through. Looks like another five points. That is now seven points between these two. We might see another lead change if there is time. Smart Atlanta just moves out of the way. Exactly. Passive offense here being played by Atlanta. Naptown trying to bridge, keep Jammunition in play. Jammunition gets out. Crowd goes crazy. Five more points to score now. 127, 125. Eight minutes left in the game. Asian Bo Sensation tried to make a move, but again, she's at five. She can't push those boundaries in the same way. Not as strong a defense as you can see on your screen right there. Trying again. Can't hold her. Shady Lane now gets in front. Can't. Amuse Bush is standing in the penalty box. Jammunition quickly calls it off. About five seconds left in the jam, but another five points. Atlanta has come roaring back. 130 to 127 Atlanta over Naptown. Just under eight minutes left in the game, Bam Bam. You know, I want to give a little credit to what you're going to see here. Nice defense, Dora the Destroyer. Gets a bump, but she's trying to hold her position. We've got Serial Killer as well, trying to hold Jam Munition back. So you've got those putting herself out, making sure she's not going to draw the foul if she can help it, because Asian Sensation twice was in position. She could make something happen, but really couldn't because she had five, uh, five trips to the box. We're already. back to it as Merchant and Menace was able to get through for lead jammer. Moose Boosh is out of the penalty box, but Atlanta enjoying a 4-2 blocker advantage over Naptown. Merchant of Menace now comes in on a scoring run. Amuse Bush with a nice move to get outside. That's a minor track cut. But I think one that you've got to take. You've got to oh, try absolutely, and push. Absolutely. Yep. Besides, she knew she had already cleared her minors in the last jam. So yep. Merchant of Menace now checks Amuse Bush, looks to finish the scoring run, trying to get past Asian Sensation, who again pushes the boundary at 20 feet but does it very well. Holds it up. It looks like four points. Smart move. Atlanta gets those. It's like, don't don't even try. Just call it right then and there. You've got an advantage. You're going to be able to come back around as you still have Dora the Destroy in the box sitting. So you're going to have a bit of benefit. They put G-Rocket out. Naptown White. You've got Jammunition in the red, number 50 for Atlanta. We've, we've not seen G-Rocket jam in eight jams. The last time she was in there, Bam Bam, though, she got lead jammer status, went on a power jam, was able to get 20 points. Jammunition jam just two jams ago, got 20 points herself as well. G-Rocket, not quite the lead scorer for Naptown, 35, 38 only by Made in America, but Jammunition definitely the power jammer, 55 points for Atlanta. G-Rocket versus Jammunition, six minutes left now in the game, 134-127, Atlanta in the red, Naptown in the white. Four blockers out there for Atlanta. All four now for Naptown as we are five on five. That's how they like to play. We've got G-Rock getting spun around at the back. Nice work from Pivot and company for Atlanta. But same thing is happening. Oh. Door to the destroy. A nice move. She gets the push. She's got to hold her back. Recycles Jammunition. So Lee Jam is going to go to Naptown. They need that. Five and a half to play, seven points down. Absent. Jam Munition again still on her initial passes. Here comes G-Rocket now, looks to score points. Forced out of bounds, comes quickly back in. Solid three wall now by Atlanta. G-Rocket's just got to get past those three. That's all four Atlanta blockers up front. As Queen Lucia Tifa goes to the penalty box, now four on two, pack advantage for Naptown in the white. G-Rocket takes a spill, but quickly back up and comes back down again. <laughs> Ammunition gets down to her knee, is able to get back up, taking a little bit of the wind out of her sails. It seems slowing her down just that much, but five points going up, so it looks like we've got a two-point game. Naptown 132, Atlanta one, uh, 134. Oh, and G-Rocket comes through untouched on the inside. Another five points. We've got another lead change. 137, 134. 20 seconds left in this jam, Bam Bam. It looks, it looks like Jammunition has definitely slowed down. She is not pushing through the way that she has 
it's kind of hard to blame her. She's got five minutes left in this game. It just doesn't seem like she can make herself go any faster, any harder, as Jammer comes along on the inside, gets, should be that thumb point. Indeed it is. Five points, calls it, still zero. Naptown triumphantly takes the lead again. And Bam Bam, I want to I point something out as we see here, excellent replay. Atlanta has no timeouts left. It looks like uh, Queen Lucia Tifa also is being sent out, if I am not mistaken. I saw Professor Murder have the conversation and high fives as she is being escorted. Yep, Queen so. Lucia Tifa has foul out of the game, Bam Bam. So just uh, as it, not, not what Atlanta needed yes. down, 142, 134, less than four minutes left. A Moose Boosh comes to the jammer line for a nap down. That is Merchant of Menace for Atlanta. Moose Boosh trying to go to the inside, getting in front of Merchant of Menace and getting in front of everybody. She comes out as your lead jammer. Atlanta has got to get their jammer out. They do. Merchant of Menace does get out. 50 feet separate the jammers. Very fast moving pack. Very hard hitting pack. Blockers aren't uh, aren't waiting for the jammers to come in to hit. Here comes a Mooge boost, comes around one, two. Now Merchant of Menace got in. I think Merchant of Menace. Nope. Zero points for Merchant of Menace. Three points for Naptown. Runs the score now to 145 to 134. And again, bam bam. Three minutes left in the game. Atlanta with no timeouts left. Yeah, and they've they've definitely lost an enforcer if you'll allow it. Queen Lucia being set up. You also have uh, Wild Cherry being held somewhat in check because of where her numbers are at well, right now. Well, speaking of Wild Cherry, she comes now to the jammer line for Atlanta. Not jammed yet in this game. She is a jammer. We saw her jamming actually yes. for Gotham last year, so we'll see what she can do here. Three on three. Oh, and she's up. She's oh, around. Oh. She's the jammer. Takes a bit of a hit to the knee. Still holds herself up. That is one of the things you have to really realize. A power in the pack player can certainly put it on when it is time to jam, and that is what we're seeing right now. Jammer is out also for Naptown, but Wild Cherry coming up into the pack. Wild Cherry comes in, looks at the scoring run. Made in America, it gets in. Wild Cherry calls it off. Both Jammers in. Both Jammers scored four points, Bam Bam. Two minutes left in this game to score 138 to 149. You can see Wild Cherry's face not quite happy with the way that turned out. She thought she had it. Is the replay right here. She turns her body to see if she can get those last that, bits of points. That, excuse me, that was where she got yes, the jammer that status. The that was such amazing control to stay inbounds, upright, and skating yes. forward. That's how she got lead jammer status. But it was the effort by Made in America to equalize the points as we yes, come back to absolutely. it now. A moose boost jamming for Naptown. Merchant of Menace comes back to the jammer line for Atlanta. 130 left in our period, potentially our last right here. 11 points. Remember, 30 seconds, tick off between the jams. Atlanta with no time outs. Naptown very wisely running clock before the jammers are released with the lead and the timeout advantage. Absolutely, this is the time to do that. Even if it's just a few seconds, everything is going to help you right now. A good portion of this crowd on their feet, and you cannot blame them. Merchant of Menace looks for the outside line. It, I'm he a hurt you doing it. a solid job. Merchant of Menace is up front. Merchant of Menace is out. Merchant of Menace is lead jammer. One minute left in the game. Both jammers out. She's got to hit it and quit it, but Amuse Boosh is right on her tails, Bam Bam. Indeed, I think this is what Atlanta needs. Atlanta's saying get some points and call it, but you've got to do it within 20 seconds you've to got, make sure you have enough time. You, and the pack is not really going to let her do much of that. That's right, Bam Bam. You've got basically 12 seconds left to call this jam. Merchant of Menace comes in on a scoring run. She's got to call it now, or this, or she's just got to go for it. She's got about, yeah, she's got about six seconds. She's looking 30, at the Four seconds. She. Oh, don't call it now. She. No, she's. All got, right. Well, this is it, Bam Bam. This is it. We've got 42 seconds left in the jam. This is the last jam of the game. Seven points. Again, 40 seconds. There is potential for both. it to happen, especially as Jammer for Napton gets knocked in and down. Remember, both Jammers, I believe, are on a scoring run. Oh, and she called it off with no timeouts. Oh, wait. It looks and like they're going for the official, official review. review. It looks like he's going to try the official review tactic. We did see this happen I stand in Vermont. Corrected, Bam Bam. We saw this in Vermont, London. Ballistic whistle with about the same time remaining, about five seconds left at the end of that game, comes out and calls it. So I think this was probably not the worst thing that could be done. You get the bit of a bump right there. She decides to end it. And we thought, no, it's going to be premature. I was wrong, Bam Bam. I, I, I have to swallow the sword on this one. I, I thought Atlanta was making a huge error they had their official review still. I, the coach, I'm sure, is out there. I would like to review the, yeah. the color of the sky. 
You called it blue and it was orange. Whatever we have to take. Why do they call a tree a tree? We're going to take a minute to figure that out, especially when you consider that Napton was able to put up a few points on that last squeak through. So Napton at 152, Atlanta at 146. It was three points until the end right there as three more went up. So now a six-point game. One attempt left for Atlanta, the home team here. Oh, boy. Thank you again for watching on WFTDA.TV. I think right now is a great opportunity to talk about. Tell your friends, you know what? The $20 was totally worth it because you're seeing this all day. You get two more days of this, my man. You get six games on Saturday. You're going to get two games on Sunday to determine three, four, and one, two. If you can see, not very well on our cameras right now. <laughs> Rev Norb has tweeted us from Wisconsin that he paid for the whole seat, but he's only using the edge. And if you know which Rev would be Norb, about three dollars. That would be well. That would be appropriate for Norb as well. He's Pretty a much skinny fella. He doesn't. He, really need he, the has, whole he seat. has lean, slight features. So everybody's standing. People getting to the edge of the track. Of course, our house announcer is saying, "Hold yourself back. We do not want to have any complications or issues. You do not want to cause." A potential loss for either team. We want to remind you, we're going to have our 2013 tournament locations announced right. after this game. All right, man, man, I guarantee you this is the last jam <laughs> made in America for Naptown in the white, Merchant of Menace for Atlanta in the red, That's 146 to 152. Here we go. We've got two blockers in the penalty box for Ed for Naptown. Merchant of Menace is almost able to do it. Merchant of Menace is She is! Through. She's out! Lead jammer, Merchant of Menace for Atlanta. Atlanta needs this control. We've got a Made in America almost through, and she is now. Made in America has got to put some speed moving forward. Again, six points. One pass right here and another pass. She can call it. So if you were Made in America, oh. you have got to push. Made in America did, uh, was forced out of bounds, but the blocker who knocked her out of bounds went down as well. So no track cut as Merchant of Menace completes a scoring run. Made in America is on a scoring run as well. There's three points. That's correct. No pass. No point makes the score 149 she to can, 152. Even if, though, we've got Made in America, if she picks up four, if Atlanta comes through and picks up four as well, mm -hmm. that is going to be the victory if she calls it in time. So we have, again, a four-point pass for... Naptown. Naptown makes the score now 156 beautiful to 149. Move, beautiful move from Serial Killer. Very, very necessary. Pushes back Atlanta's jammer. So that instant win has been quelled. So Naptown now with Made in America is up front. Remember, both jammers on their second scoring run here. Made in America gets out. 45 seconds left. Four more points there. Merchant of Menace has got to do this now. She's forced out of bounds. Inya Gray with a solid hit. Just comes all the way back. There's the jammer lap point. It's a shave and a haircut. Five points for Naptown. Naptown running away with this, Bam Bam. Indeed, 30 seconds left. There was inches, inches in which Atlanta had control of this game and, and points right there being put up because of the defense of Naptown. Wild Jerry with all a solid credit. hit on Made in America. Both jammers now recycling, but Merchant of Menace stuck. She does finally get out and a Oh, a major track cut on, Ma on Merchant of Menace. Four seconds left. That's it, Bam Bam. Oh, Back Naptown. Naptown, hands up in the air. Oh. Everyone is standing. Even us. Few seconds remaining. It looks like our final score, we will update it correctly. But 153 Atlanta, 169 for Naptown. As one of the best games. I have ever seen in my eight and a half years of calling women's flat track roller derby. Final score now 169 to 153. Bam Bam Atlanta gave it everything they had. That was their first trip to the WFTDA championships. But I, I will agree. I've, I've been doing this eight years, and this is going to rank in easily in the top five games. And, and, and not even the fact that it was so close, but remember, Naptown was down. As we said ad nauseum, Naptown was down. 50 points and they were able to and come back. The audience was definitely calling this Atlanta's game at that first 10 minutes. Then it started to come back around. So we want to... As the official, yep. the official score has now finally come down. No surprise, the refs took a minute to get it right. As they should. And the uh, crowd coming out, Naptown just... <laughs> well, they're happy, Bam Bam. <laughs> they should be.